Hi, my name is Ravin Istala. In this video, I will be walking you through the project related to healthcare domain. It is about classifying X-ray images of pneumonia patients using deep learning methodology. The problem space for this project is about identifying, classifying and predicting pneumonia X-ray images using Convolutional Neural Networks CNN when given a data containing X-ray images of both normal patients and pneumonia patients. The project is developed using Python. CNNs were developed using Keras with backend TensorFlow. More details on enrollment will be on next slide. The last bullet point in this slide shows about the data. The link gives the location of the data. The data which is being used in this project is called chest x-ray 2017.zip. Approximate size of the data is 1.2 gig. The citation for this data is also provided in this slide. Now let's go to the enrollment slide. This slide shows the details of the enrollment which is being used to build the project. The VM was created on Google Cloud Platform with Ubuntu operating system containing 22 virtual CPU, 50 gig RAM and 30 gig persistent disk. While building my model, the CPU were averaging around 90% and each epoch was taking anywhere from 2 minutes to 3 to 4 minutes. So this should give you an idea how you have to get your machine in order to build the models. Coming to the software, the main component of software is Conda. Conda comes with TensorFlow. Then you have to install Keras and other packages like CV2, Plyplot, Matplotlib. The commands to install those packages is being given in this slide. This slide talks about the data which is being downloaded. It contains three main folders, train data, test data, validation data. Each folder again contains two subfolders, one containing normal X-ray images, the other one containing X-ray images of pneumonia patients. This slide shows the code base which is being used to load the data into the arrays. We can see that normalization is being used when we load the data from the folder location into an array. This slide shows the output after normalization. We can compare the images before normalization and after normalization. We can also see that the pixel intensity has changed before and after normalization. The normal X-ray classes are not equal to pneumonia classes. To make them equal, we apply upsampling as shown in this slide. This slide shows the aftermath of the upsampling. On the left side, we see before upsampling and on the right side we see after upsampling of the two classes. This slide shows sample data. The first row contains the normal X-ray images and the second row shows the X-ray images of pneumonia patients. This slide talks about the process overview on how the project was being developed and executed. Three models were chosen, manual, two pre-trained models from Keras application called VGG19 and VGG16. New top layers were being added to these two pre-trained models. All the three models were trained using the train data and test data and validated using the validation data and test data. Three outputs were being generated for these three models. One is precision of prediction. 
accuracy and loss plot and the third one confusion matrix plot an optimal model is being picked up out of these three models and L2 regularization is being added to that model further slide talks about the code and the demonstration output this code shows manually created model. The X-ray images are larger in size, so we will make our network accordingly larger. It will have three Conv2D and Max polling 2D stages. This serves both to augment the capacity of the network and to further reduce the size of the feature maps so that they aren't overlay large when we reach the flatten layer. Here since we start for inputs of size 150 by 150, we end up with feature maps of size 7 by 7 right before the flatten layer. The feature ma map is also increasing as you can see in the slide from 32 to 64 to 128. Here we are dealing with two categorical variables, 0 for normal, 1 for pneumonia. So the last dense layer has a value 2 with sigmoid activation. This slide talks about one of the Keras pre-trained model VGG19. The location to download the model is being given. We have added a new top layer to the existing VGG19 model. The next slide will talk about VGG16 model. This slide talks about VGG16 another Keras application pre-trained model. Similar to the VGG19, we added a new top layer to this one also. This slide shows the code to train and evaluate the model. This slide shows the code to create a confusion matrix. This is one of the output demonstrations of the model. This slide shows the code to plot learning curve. The method takes an input, a history. The history is an output which we get by training a model. Then it calculates the accuracy and loss per epoch. This slide shows the demonstration output of the manual model which we developed earlier. For all the models, in this project, we did two tests. One is the test with the test data, which was used to train the model also. But again, we also performed another test on validation data, which is a new data, which the model has never seen. So here you see the predictions of the two tests, 0.83 for the prediction of test data and 0.94 for the prediction of the validation data. Then you see the confusion matrix of the test data. Just to explain how to read this confusion matrix, I'll explain here in detail in this slide, but the next slides I will just briefly give an overview. So for this confusion matrix, what it tells is that there are a total of 780 cases which were evaluated. The true positive cases are 384, which means it predicted yes for a patient who had the disease. True negative cases are 211, which means that there are 211 x-rays which do not have pneumonia and also were identified as no pneumonia. There are 179 false positive cases where 179 patients were identified as having pneumonia where they did not had pneumonia. Similarly, six cases were identified as false negative, which means they, they were identified as no pneumonia, but they really had pneumonia. This slide shows the confusion matrix of the validation test and the accuracy plot of the model. In this case, it is manually developed model. The confusion matrix tells us that the True positive cases are 8 and true negative cases are 7 and false positive cases are 1. There are no false negative cases in this demonstration. 
This slide shows the output of VGG19 pre-trained model with a added new top layer. The precision values of test is 0.81 and that of the validation is 1 and the confusion matrix says that a total of 780 cases were being evaluated out of which true positive cases are 387, true negative cases are 172, false positive cases are 218 and false negative cases are 3. This slide shows us the values of validation test on VGG19 pre-trained model and the accuracy plot. The confusion matrix tells us that the true positive cases are 8 and true negative cases are also 8. There are no false positives or false negatives. This slide shows the VGG16 demonstration output. The precision of test data is 0 0.80 and that of validation is 1. The confusion matrix tells us that the true positive cases are 385, true negative cases are 159, false positive cases are 231 and false negative cases are 5. This slide shows the validation test and the accuracy plot of VGG16 model. It, the accuracy plot reflects the precision values which are being shown in the previous slide. The confusion matrix tells us that the true positive cases are 8 and the true negative cases are also 8. Based on the analysis of the three models which we did in our previous slides, we found that the model which was manually developed was optimal than the other two models. So in this slide we are adding the regularizers to that manual model and we will be doing evaluation as we did for the other models. This slide shows the demonstration output of the manual model which was developed with L2 regularization. You can see that the precision value is 0.83 for the test data and 0.94 for the validation data. Coming to the confusion matrix, it says that the total cases which were evaluated are 780, true positive cases are 389, true negative cases are 199, false positive cases are 191, false negative cases are 1. This slide shows the confusion matrix of the test on validation data by the manual model which we developed in earlier slide with L2 regularization. It also shows the accuracy plot which matches with the precision values we discussed earlier. The confusion matrix tells us that the true positive cases are 8, true negative cases are 7, false positive cases are 1 and there are none false negative cases. This ends the analysis and predictions. The next slide we will discuss the conclusion of this analysis and lessons learned. This is the last slide of the presentation. We have developed three models, analyzed them, and based on that we picked up one model, added the L2 regularization, and then again performed the analysis and prediction. We can conclude that the manually developed model with L2 regularization performed well when compared to the other models. The other thing we can see from the analysis is that the modal complexity is not directly related to quality of the classification. Out of the three models we predicted, we saw that the manual had the highest precision values. The lessons learned from this analysis is that we don't have to spend more money and time on costly hardware like GPU, but we can have simple models with 
correct hyperparameters then they can perform well when compared to the other complex models like VGG19 or VG16. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any comments, please leave the comments below.